Hello everyone. In this session, we are going to discuss about the nucleic acids under that mechanism of DNA replication of paper 5 that is cell biology and biotechnology. So as we have already discussed about the DNA and structure and also we have already discussed about the different experiments which proves that DNA is the genetic material. So let's move on to the next concept that is the mechanism of DNA replication. So DNA replication it is a very complex multi-step process which involves the copying and duplicating of the DNA molecules. So here n number of enzymes n number of scientific terminologies were very important. So here in this DNA replication there are two types of processes that is catalytic and analytic. So catalytic process where DNA is used to form DNA that is replication and DNA is used for making RNA that is transcription. So that transcription will be studying later. So mainly here how the mechanism of DNA it takes place by using different types of enzymes. So let's begin. So the DNA mainly replication is the duplication process by which where the DNA molecules they produce exact copies of its own. For example if a sequence if it contains ATGC you remember adenine, guanine, cytosine and thymine complementary to that how by using Chergaff rule the same sequence will be obtained. So that is called as the replication. So it involves nothing but the copying of the DNA and the DNA it has got the ability of self duplication. So examples it takes place in prokaryotes and eukaryotes, viruses, plants, animals, bacteria, even the mitochondrial DNA, chloroplastal DNA, plasmids. So this mechanism of replication it is same as seen from bacteria to humans. The machinery of replication is working for more than millions of years without much changes during the evolution. So if during the evolution the DNA replication is changing due to the mutation or it leads to the uh, evolution or change in organism. So that is what in humans the from the million years ago our DNA replication is taking place in the same mechanism. So this replication occurs both in single stranded DNA as well as the double stranded DNA and also the replication the parental strand it acts as a template means the parental strand as you have known the semi conservative method. So I will be explaining in uh, detail what do you mean by semi conservative method where the parental strand separates and to that parental strand newly synthesized strands are attached those are strands are called as the daughter strands. So that newly synthesized strands they are complementary to the parental strands. So later the DNA replication as I have said it is a semi conservative method as it is having two strands it produces or uh, it divides uh, if you are having rope in that rope two large strings are there if you are separating and you can call it as a parental strand and to that parental strand newly synthesized strand that is daughter strands will be attaching. So this replication is also called as semi discontinuous method because the one strand of the DNA is synthesized in short fragments and another strand is synthesized continuously. So that continuous strand we call it as leading strand and short fragments we call it as Okazaki fragments or lagging strand. And this replication is bidirectional. It occurs in opposite direction both as well as uh, in leading strand as well as in the lagging strand. I will show the pictures in coming slides. So this is the picture understanding first we need to know the enzymes. So as the DNA replication is very complex process 
the same steps are occurring in prokaryotes as well as in eukaryotes but the minor differences are within the nucleus and outside the nucleus so let's see what type of enzymes are very important for the dna replication so as i already said catalysis and the heterocatalysis so the first enzyme is the helicase so helicase is an enzyme which helps in unwinding the dna strands that is why it is also called as unwindase and in other time it is also called as the molecular stitcher topoisomerase it cuts rotates and reseal the dna strand so may, for example once the helicase is uh, enzyme it uh, recoils the dna strand or if unwinds the dna so what this topoisomerase do it will have a tension that the recoiled dna should not coil again because if it coils again there synthesis of newly strand dna cannot takes place that is the work of the topoisomerase maintaining the stability or you can tell the release of tension or coiled tension next you are having ssbp that is single stranded binding protein it helps in maintaining the stability because those are mainly keeping apart next dna ligase which helps in the joining process means they are molecular stitcher so next dna polymerase 1 which helps in the removal of primer primers are nothing but they are small segment of rna and they also helps in filling the gap next primase primase they helps in synthesizing the primer and what type of primer dna dependent rna polymerase so this is very important primase enzyme which helps in the synthesis and it is mainly dna dependent rna polymerase dna polymerase 3 it is also called as dimer because it helps in the synthesis of dna strand in bidirectional so this is also a very important enzyme which helps in synthesizing of newly strand dna to the parental strand and phosphorylase it helps in activation that is the phosphate group will be added to the nucleotides and nuclease it helps in the proofreading so these are the important enzymes uh, which helps in dna replication let's move how the replication takes place so the replication it involves three main important steps that is initiation elongation and termination and during replication what happens these deoxyribonucleotides they are added one after the other and they form polynucleotide chain because more number of nucleotides are added to one chain then it will become a large number of molecules so that is why they are called as polynucleotide chain and this the process is called as polymerization and the addition of nucleotides which is catalyzed by an enzyme as i said that is dna polymerase it may be one or three so it is very important enzyme during the replication and synthesis always starts from 5 prime region to 3 prime region so next coming what are the types of dna replication so here in types of dna replication there are three types one is semi conservative method and conservative method and the dispersive method so first we'll see what happens in the semi conservative method so as already said the parental dna strands they separate and newly synthesized strands will be attached so those dna molecules they serve as the template and newly sin, uh, synthesized strands they are complementary attached so they are called as parental strand and daughter strand so as one strand of the parental molecule is considered in the daughter molecule this method is also called as semi conservative method so it was proved by an experiment by misselson and stall next conservative method so here what happens this was proposed by uh, cavalry and rosenberg here the two strands act as a template and produce new daughter double strands so there what to, uh, in uh, semi conservative used to, what used to happen only one daughter strand used to synthesize but here all four strands will be new strand and they act as daughter now now in dispersive method what happens here the daughter dna molecules are assembled 
linking to the old and new piece randomly here because of the small segmented dna so due to that small segments the daughter dna molecule they are assembled by linking the old and new different types of dna segments so this is the types of dna replication semi conservative method and conservative and next dispersive so now we will move to the detail about the mechanism of dna replication as you can see in this picture okay this uh, i will show okay so this is the diagram which you need to draw during the uh, if they ask this question in the examination so as you can see there is five prime end towards the three prime end how the dna is replicating first two different strands are mainly so this is the five prime end three prime and this five prime end it is ending with three prime and this three prime is ending with five prime so now first what happens so in first step the replication it begins at the specific site that is called as origin so point of origin is very important so in point of origin there what happens due to the activation of specific endonuclease or also you can tell the helicase which helps in the unwinding of the dna so in this picture the helicase it will mainly help in unwinding the dna so unwinding the dna in the form of two different strand so this is the one strand and this is the second strand so as i was telling the leading strand and lagging strand if the strand is continuously synthesized as you can see this strand is continuous there is no gaps so that is called as leading strand here you can see the strands are discontinuous so these strands are called as lagging strands okay so now the single stranded binding protein what they do they bind to the separate strand to prevent the rejoining so as i was telling the help in recoiling or sorry they uh, remove the tension and uh, they remove the tension and also they help in the maintaining the dna strand separately so this is the ssbp there you can see the protein which are attached to the dna segments next the two y shaped replicating fork what they do they form at the point of origin and they move away so how they move now so they are replic this is the replicating fork region so this is the replicating fork so in that replicating fork region what happens so now slowly this helicase will move towards this region so what happens this replicating fork will extend in the form it is unwinding so this will move towards upper side and another this region will move towards the lower side slowly what happens the chain of the dna is uh, breaking in this manner next the parental strand act as template and synthesis of new strand takes place as i have said and usually remember the synthesis it takes place in the direction of 5 prime to 3 prime direction and synthesis of dna strand on one parental strand takes place continuously uh, that is leading strand and one takes place in uh, discontinuous manner that is lagging strand so that lagging strand is also called as okazaki fragments so here you can see this is the lagging strand leading strand sorry and this is lagging strand and these are also called as okazaki fragments so next due to that what happens the dna polymerase 3 they add dna nucleotides so dna polymerase 3 where you can find the dna polymerase 3 so dna polymerase is in this region so it starts to 
extend or it helps in uh, synthesizing complementary strand in this manner so now there newly synthesized strand is started but here what happens this dna polymerase which is present it will synthesize the dna strand in such a way that the fragments are discontinuous so that is why this is called as the lagging strand or the okazaki fragments so now what happens the parental strands growth lags behind and that is the okazaki fragments and later the dna primer are removed from the leading and lagging strand and that gap is filled by the dna polymerase one so polymerase one enzyme is function is mainly to fill the gap and by using the enzyme that is polymerase with that help only you can the dna nucleotides are completed and now the dna polymerase 2 they do the correction like proof reading so as i said they mainly helps in proof reading the dna ligase they are freely linked enzyme they help in joining or they are mainly set to the new segment formation and topo isomerase 1 and 2 they release supercoiling they cut and they join so these are the main important steps that takes place in the mechanism of dna replication very important for your examination point of view can be asked for seven marks so this is the summary the stepwise please go through that so next we'll move on to the difference of dna replication in prokaryotes and eukaryotes so in prokaryotes the five polymerase that is one two three four and five but whereas in here also five polymerase alpha beta gamma delta and epsilon so these are the important five polymerase and what are the function of the polymerase in prokaryotes one it involves in synthesis but whereas in eukaryotes alpha it helps in polymerization and after the synthesizing what it does proofreading repairing removal of rna polymer but that does not takes place in the eukaryotes but whereas in prokaryote second it helps in repairing the beta it is also helping in the repairing enzyme third it mainly helps in polymerization but here the gamma it helps in the mitochondrial dna synthesis the fourth and fifth in prokaryotes they repair enzyme under the unusual condition but here the condition of the uh, gamma is still mainly it helps in polymerization but whereas in epsilon the function is not yet known and the okazaki fragment size is much larger or the reduced longest but here the reduce will be residues will be longer in uh, uh, eukaryotes also and whereas no protein complex to dna but here as you have already studied the dna uh, um, structure during that time i have said about the octamer formation that is histone complex formation will be formed in eukaryotes so this is the major difference between the prokaryotic dna replication and eukaryotic dna replication so can be asked for three marks next forms of dna so till now the dna structure of watson and crick model what you have studied that is about the uh, b dna and still you are having a dna z dna and d dna so let's see what are the difference between the these three different types of dnas so coming to the first one a dna it is right handed helix b dna is also a type of right handed z dna is left handed and you should remember the diameter so in a dna that is 26 armstrongs whereas b dna that is 10 armstrongs and z dna is 18 armstrongs and base pairing per helical turn that is in a dna it will be 11.6 in b dna 10 whereas in z dna 12 which is that means six diamonds each uh, two helix will be having four dimer for example if you have only two helix then it will be having one dimer next helical pitch it is same for a and b that is 34 armstrong but whereas in z dna that will be having 44 armstrong then rise will be changing because of their pitch 
and that is up to 2.9 Armstrong, 3.4 in BDNA, 7.4 in ZDNA. And remember, there are grooves which I have already said major grooves and minor grooves. So depending on the size, for example, if the grooves are larger, then the brace pairings also will change. So glycosidic bond will be also present. These are some of the difference between ADNA, BDNA and ZDNA. So in this concept mainly mechanism of DNA replication is very important and difference between DNA replication in prokaryotes and eukaryotes and forms of DNA is important. So that's all about this session. Thank you.